السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله This is now the second session of our journey through the book of fasting from كتاب زاد المستقنع في اختصار المقنع of Imam Al-Hijawi رحمه الله تعالى So the next sentence that the author says he says قوله ويلزم الصوم لكل مسلم مكلف قادر that fasting is obligatory upon every Muslim who is mukallaf and who has the ability. Ashara ila shurut wujub siyam wa katali. So Sheikh Mansur in the explanation, he says that the author has alluded to the conditions of fasting being obligatory and they are as follows. Al-awwal al-Islam, the first of them being Islam. Fal-kafir la yasihu sawmahu. So the non-Muslim, the kafir, his fasting obviously is not accepted, is not correct, sorry. وَلَا يَقْبَلُوا وَلَا يُطَالِبِهِ And nor is it going to be accepted if he does do it, and nor is he asked to do it. وَالْإِلَّةُ And the reason, the reasoning, أَنَّ صَوْمْ ibada Because song fasting, is an act of worship. تَفْتَقِرُ إِلَى niya It requires and it necessitates that a intention must be there. فَاشْتَرَطَ لَهَا الْإِسْلَامْ كَالصَّلَاةِ Therefore, Islam is, necessi- is, a necess- is a necessity for it like Salah, like it is for Salah. A thani a taklif. The th- second condition that the author mentioned was a taklif. Okay. Wa yashminu hada amrain. And this consists of two matters. The first of them, al balugh for sagiru la yajibu alayhi sawm. Balugh, that a person reaches the age of maturity, puberty, we can say, so that the youngster below puberty, uh, fasting is not obligatory upon them. The second matter, which is imperative here, is al-aql, is the faculties of reasoning. Therefore, we can say that the uh, insane person, his fasting is not going to be correct, it's not going to be accepted, and nor is it obligatory upon him. And the evidence for these two conditions is found in the hadith of Abi Dawood and uh, Ahmed and others, where they narrate from Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, where he said that the Prophet said, that the pen has been lifted from three people, from the one who has lost his faculty of thought, from the insane, حتى يفيق, until he regains his faculty of thought. وعن النائم حتى يستيقظ And also the pen has been lifted from the one who is sleeping until he wakes up. وعن الصبي حتى يحتلم And also the pen has been lifted from the one who is under the age of puberty until he reaches the age of puberty. The third matter which was mentioned by the author in regarding the conditions of what makes it obligatory is القدرة. القدرة على الصيام the ability to actually do the fast فالعاجز عن الصيام لا يجب عليه so the one who is incapable of fasting for a variety of reasons then fasting is not obligatory upon him والدليل عمومات الآيات كقول تعالى and the evidence is the generality of the verses for example Allah says فاتقوا الله ما استطعتم fear Allah as much as you are able to do meaning that if you don't have the ability to fear Allah in this matter to do this obligation then it's not upon you and also Allah says لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he doesn't put upon a soul in terms of obligations except that which which it is able to bear so if the soul cannot bear it due to a variety of reasons then fasting is not obligatory the author he moves on he said وإذا قامت البينة في أثناء النهار وجب الإمساك والقضاء على كل من صار في أثنائه أهلا لوجوبه if the news comes to the people that fasting has now started, that the month of Ramadan has started, and this comes to them during the day, wajib al imsak, then on that day, because they're already in the month of Ramadan and the news came to them late, let's say for example at 12 o'clock midday, so then what's obligatory upon them is imsak, is to withhold from eating and drinking and other matters which break the fast for the rest of the day. وَالْقَضَاءُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ مَنْ صَارَ فِي, أثناءي في أثنائه أَهْلًا لِوَجُوبِهِ And also the one who becomes somebody who fasting is obligatory upon in that day, then uh, they have to make up 
the fast that they missed in that day. So the author, he gives an explanation of this. Uh, sorry, Sheikh Mansour gives an explanation of this. And he says, كَأَنْ يَكُونُ مَنْ رَعَى الْهِلَالِ بَعِيدًا It could be a situation that the one who saw the month of Ramadan, okay, the starting uh, moon, the full moon, uh, that the person who saw the moon sighting was far away from the people. وَلَمْ يَحْدُرُ لِلْقَادِ إِلَّا النَّهَارٌ And he didn't get to the judge to inform him of his sighting, except during the day. فَإِنَّهُ يَجِبُ فِي ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمْ أَمْرَانٌ So in this situation, then there are two matters which are imperative. الأول, الإمساك بقية اليوم. The first of them is that the people withhold from eating for the rest of the day. وَالْإِلَّةُ أَنَّهُمْ ثَبَتَ أَنَّهُ يَوْمٍ رَمَضَانٌ فَلْيَلْزَمُهُمْ إِمْسَاكْ بَقِيَتِهِ And the إِلَّةُ, the reason for withholding from food and drink for the rest of the day, is that it has now been confirmed that this is a day of Ramadan. So therefore they must uh, withhold from doing anything which breaks the fast for the rest of the day. وَلِأَنَّ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَمْرَ النَّاسِ حِينَ وَجَبَ صَوْمُ الْعَاشِ وَرَأَى بِالْإِمْسَاكِ أَثْنَاءَ النَّهَارِ فَأَمْسَكُوا And also the Prophet Sallallahu when he sent a messenger, a messenger to one of the towns uh, around Medina to inform the people that the, um, the fasting of Hashura is obligatory upon them as it was in the early parts of Islam. Uh, and then they, the people who were not fasting in the morning and only got this news later on in the day, they had to withhold the rest of the day and fast the rest of the day. The second matter, الثاني القضاء. The second matter is that this fast has to be made up. The fast that we're talking about wherein somebody has received the news of it being Ramadan during the day or somebody has become one who it's obligatory upon them to fast during the day. They weren't, it wasn't obligatory upon them before that, but during the day, let's say for example, somebody accepted Islam, so upon him is to do what the author is mentioning. Uh, Sheikh Mansour, he says, الثاني القضاء, يعني أي القضاء ذلك اليوم الذي علموا في أثنائه, that they have to make up this day. والإلا أنهم لم ينوا الصيام من الليل. The reason they have to make up this day and that is not valid as an acceptable fast is because they didn't make the intention from the previous night. And it's known, well known, that for a fard, for an obligatory fast, that the niyyah has to be there before the fajr of that day. Because we find the hadith in Ahmad, Abi Dawood and elsewhere, Hafsa radiallahu anha, she said that the Prophet sallallahu said, مَنْ لَمْ يُجْمِعَ الصِّيَامِ قَبْلَ الْفَجْرِ فَلَا صِيَامَ لَهُ That whoever doesn't make the intention to have the fast before fajr, then there is no fasting for that person. وَلِأَنَّهُمْ ثَبَتَ كَوْنُ هَذَا الْيَوْمِ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ وَلَمْ يَأْتُوا فِيهِ بِصَوْمٍ صَحِيْءٍ فَلَزَمَهُمْ قَضَاءُهُمْ لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى And as we mentioned, that because they didn't do a correct fasting in this day, they only fasted once some of the day had passed, therefore they have to make this up. And because Allah says in the Qur'an, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْهُ Whoever from amongst you gets to know that it's the month of Ramadan, then he should fast that month of Ramadan. وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخْرَ And the one who isn't fasting due to being sick, or due to being on travel, then he should make up uh, these days at another time. And also enters into this uh, sentence, into this masala, into this issue which the author was discussing, or the author has put forward for us. Uh, that a young person, if they become mature during the day, then now they have to do what we mentioned, they have to withhold from the rest of the day from eating, drinking, and sexual intercourse, and anything else that breaks the fast, and they have to also make it up. وَالْكَافِرُ إِذَا أَسْلَمَ And also a non-Muslim, if he becomes Muslim during the day of Ramadan. فَقَدْ صَارَ فِي أَثْنَاءِ النَّهَارِ أَهْلًا لِلْوَجُوبِ Because these people, this, the young boy who became mature, and the kafir who became a Muslim, they have now become people upon whom fasting is obligatory. فَيَجِبُ عَلَيْهِمْ الْإِمْسَاكِ وَالْقَضَاءِ So therefore it's obligatory upon them to have imsak, to withhold from the things that break the fast, and to also make al-qada. Al-qada is to make the day up. أَقَوْلُ الثَّانِي Another uh, opinion in the madhab, held by Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, that أَنَّهُ يَلْزُمُهُمْ الْإِمْسَاكِ لَكِنَّ لَا يَقْدُونَ Okay, that it's upon these people that we've mentioned, these people who found out that the um, they only found out 
uh, later on in the day that it was Ramadan or they became people whom fasting is obligatory upon like the Kafir became a Muslim in the latter part of a day uh, of Ramadan then these people they don't have to they only have to withhold from eating and drinking for the rest of the day and they don't have to make that day up from the evidences of this statement is in Bukhari and Muslim when the Prophet وسلم, he sent uh, people to announce that it is the day of Ashura to the towns around Medina. So the Prophet وسلم, told this person to say Man kana Whoever was fasting so let him complete his fast. Man kana muftiran, and whoever was not fasting then let him fast the rest of the day. So in this hadith it mentions only that imsak has to be made that withholding from the things which break the fast has to be made and it didn't mention that making up the fast had to be done even though in the early time of Islam when this hadith was present or this was announced to the people uh, Yawm al-Ashura was obligatory upon the people to fast it later on became Sunnah as mentioned by Sheikh Muhammad al-Hamad uh, the author he goes on and he says وَكَذَا حَائِدٌ وَنُفَسَاءُ طَهُرَتَا وَمُسَافِرٌ قَدِّمَا مُفْتِرًا And likewise this ruling that we just previously mentioned it applies also to the one who is ha'id the one who is menstruating but then she became pure during the day وَنُفَسَاءُ and also the one who had postnatal bleeding but this she, they, she, she became pure during the day وَمُسَافِرٌ قَدِّمَا مُفْتِرًا And also a traveller who returned to his land or reached his destination where he's going to stay for four days or more uh, and he, uh, you know, uh, he reached that place with still time left in the day whereupon he has to withhold from eating and drinking or sexual intercourse. طيب, Sheikh Abd al-Salam al-Shawayr Hafidullah he mentions that the reason these people were mentioned separately to the previous statement of the author is because that these people were originally people of wujub that psalm is originally obligatory upon them but they didn't fast due to amani they didn't fast due to something which prevented them from fasting like the ha'id the menstruating woman or the traveler etc sheikh mansur says the reason these people uh, have to make up this day is because they didn't fast from the beginning of the day, from the time of Fajr. So therefore, if the excuse which prevented these people from fasting, okay, the Ha'id, the menstruating woman, she becomes pure now. So the excuse that prevents her from fasting has now gone. So she has to have imsak for the rest of the day and she has to make the day up. Because Allah said, as we mentioned the verse previously, وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَإِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخْرٍ In Surah Al-Baqarah, whoever from amongst you was sick or upon a journey, then he should make up the fasting in other days. And also we have the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim of Aisha radiallahu anha, where the Prophet, where she was asked, um, she was asked, I forget the person who asked her, she was asked, مَا بَعُ الْحَائِدْ تَقْدِ الصَّلَوْمْ وَلَا تَقْدِ الصَّلَاءُ uh, she was asked, why is it that the menstruating woman makes up the fasting but doesn't make up the prayers that she missed? So Aisha radiallahu anha, towards the end of the hadith, she said, uh, yusibuna dhalik, That used to happen to us in the time of the Prophet sallallahu So we used to be commanded to make up the fast. وَلَا نُؤْمَرُوا بِقَضَاءَ الصَّلَاءَ And we never used to be commanded to make up the salawat. So the point from the hadith is that those like we mentioned, the Ha'id and the Nufasa and the Musafir, uh, they have to make up the first as well as uh, abstaining from the rest of the day. The author he goes on and he says, Woman after Ali Kibarin, whoever doesn't fast due to being old in age, O Maradin La Yurja Buruhu, O due to a sickness and the sickness and the sickness is not expected that the person will be cured from it. Then these two groups of people, they feed for each day that they didn't fast, a miskin, a poor person. Sheikh Mansur, he says, if a person is unable to fast, and this inability is 
expect it to last forever. إما لكبر سن either due to old age أو لمرض لا يرجى بروه أو due to a type of sickness which the person is not expected to be cured from. فإن له الفطر then this person it's permitted for him that he or she doesn't have to fast ولا قضاء عليه and there's no need for this person to make up the day that they missed ولكن عليه الإطعام عن كل يوم مسكين but what is upon them is that they feed for every day that they missed from the fasting of Ramadan, that they feed a poor person. What the lilu and the evidence, of course, is قول الله تعالى is the evidence in the Quran. وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين. And upon those يطيقونه, Sheikh Sami Suqayb said that many of the Mufassirin they said يطيقونه means that it's difficult upon them. They find great difficulty in fasting. So upon the ones who find great difficulty in fasting. فِدْيَةٌ طَعَامُ مِسْكِينٌ That these people, they pay the fidya of feeding a poor person for the day or the days that they have missed, for each day that they missed. Uh, in Bukhari, uh, Imam Bukhari collects the statement of uh, Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma where he said, لَيْسَتْ بِمَنْسُوخَةٍ هُوَ شَيْكُ الْكَبِيرُ وَالْمَرْأَةُ الْكَبِيرَةُ That this verse was not repealed, it was not cancelled. Rather, it refers to an old man or an old woman. لا يستطيعاني أن يصوما فيطعمان مكان كل يوم مسكينا. These two are unable to fast. So, what they do in place of not being able to fast, they feed a poor person for each day that they miss, as stated by Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه. Sheikh Mansour he says, وَلِأَنَّ الْفِطْرِ إِذَا جَازَ لِلْمَرِيدِ because if it's permissible for the sick person not to fast. فِلْيَأَنْ يَجُوزْ لِلْعَاجِزْ بِطَرِيقِ الْأُولَى Then it's even more befitting that the one who is unable, like the, uh, the elderly person or the uh, one who has sickness which is everlasting, then it's even more befitting that this person doesn't have to fast. وَالْإِطْعَامْ And with regard to feeding, أَنْ يُؤْتِي كُلَّ مَسْكِينَ مُدَّبُرْ أَوْ نِصْفُ سَعَةً That every sick person every sick person, that every person that you are going to feed is given a nisf sa'a of food, uh, like uh, two handfuls of food which is found to be sufficient for them and which is normal to be fed in that particular country. So you don't bring food which is not common to the people of that country. وَالْإِلَّةُ أَنَّ الْمَطْلُوبُ مِقْدَارَ الْكِفَايَةَ مِنْ أَوْسَطْ مَا يُطْعَمَ النَّاسِ وَهَادَ مِقْدَارُ الْكِفَايَةَ And the reason that this نصف ساعة يعني two handfuls of food is to be given because the feeding has to be that which is sufficient to feed a poor person and that what we've just mentioned is what is sufficient question to yourselves if the elderly or sick either the elderly person or a sick person who it's not hoped that his sickness will be cured يعني it's an everlasting sickness these people they travel then the fidya on these people, then the feeding of the poor on these people is not required for the fast that they missed when they travel. Why? Question to yourselves, why is this the case? Tayyib, Sheikh Sami Suqair, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says, لِأَنَّ الْوَاجِبَ عَلَيْهِ لَمَا كَانَ فِي الْحَضْرِ الْإِطْعَامِ Because the obligation upon them when they were residents was to feed a poor person for any day that they missed, right? وَالْإِطْعَامُ بَدَلْ عَنِ الصِّيَامِ So the feeding is a replacement for the fasting. فَإِذَا سَافَرَ فَسَفَرُ يُسْقِطُ عَنْهُ الصِّيَامِ And if the person travels, then the travel causes the fasting to be removed as an obligation from the person. فَيُسْقِطُ مُقَابِلُهُ وَهُ الْإِطْعَامِ And if the fasting has been removed, then also that which was a replacement for the fasting, the feeding has also been removed. Some nice interesting fiqh mentioned by Sheikh Sami al suqayr Hafidahullah Ta'ala in his explanation of Rawdul Murbi'ah. The author, he says, may Allah have mercy upon him, وَسُنَّ لِمَرِيدٍ يَضُرُّهُ And it's طيب And it's sunnah, meaning it's makru if the person doesn't do this. It's sunnah for the sick person who if he fasts, the fasting is going to harm him, that he shouldn't fast. It's sunnah that he shouldn't fast. And this of course is referring to the one that if he fasts or she fasts, then the fasting will cause their uh, sickness to be either prolonged or to get worse. Okay, so if this is the situation, 
uh, then the sick person, it's sunnah for him or her not to fast. And the evidence in the Quran, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَإِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخْرٍ In Surah Al-Baqarah, those from amongst you who are sick or upon a journey, then they should make up their fasting in other days. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the author, he says, وَلِمُسَافِرٍ يَقْصُرُ And also it's sunnah for the person not to fast if he is a traveller and he's travelling the distance of 80 kilometers or more. Why 80 kilometers or more? Because if you travel a distance, the journey is going to be 80 kilometers or more, then it means that you can shorten your prayers. So if you're traveling a distance, which is going to be a journey of 80 kilometers or more, then in this journey, you are allowed not to fast. You are allowed not to fast with certain conditions. What dalil? Again, the ayah, the same ayah that we keep mentioning. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَإِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخْرٍ And whoever from amongst you is sick or is traveling, then he should make up days other than those days. وَمِنُّ السُّنَّةِ And also from the Sunnah, the Prophet ﷺ in Bukhari and Muslim, Jabir رضي الله عنه narrates that the Prophet ﷺ said, لَيْسَ مِنَ الْبِرْ أَصْيَامُ فِي السَّفَرِ أو لَيْسَ مِنَ الْبِرْ أَصْيَامُ فِي السَّفَرِ That it's not from righteousness or goodness that a person fasts whilst he's traveling. والمريد والمسافر يستحب لهما الفطر. So Sheikh Mansour says that the sick person and the one who is travelling, it's highly recommended. It's recommended that they do not fast. والإلا and the reason أنه أخف عليهم that it's easier upon them. وفي قبول رخصة الله تعالى and it's uh, also accepting the permission of ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to his slaves and in the hadith it mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that his ease is taken as he hates that sins are committed. In Bukhari Muslim, the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha where she said about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam مَا خُيِّرَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم بين أمرين إلا أخذ أيسرهما ما لم يكن إثم that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was never given a choice between two matters except that he always chose the easiest of them as long as there was no sin involved. So this hadith is showing us that if you are fasting and you are traveling, then take the ease, the easiest way, which is that you shouldn't fast. Question to yourselves. Question to yourselves. When is it not allowed to travel in Ramadan? When is it not allowed for a person to travel in Ramadan? طيب العلماء شيخ, uh, such as Sheikh Sami Suqair Hafidullah Ta'ala he said a person if his intention is to travel to escape the obligation of fasting some people may have this hila that's trickery that they want to travel in order to escape the obligation of fasting so if somebody's going to do that then it's not permissible for them to do that rather they have to fast the author he moves on and he says وَإِن نَوَى حَاذِرٌ صَوْمَ يَوْمٍ ثُمَّ سَافَرَ فِي أَثْنَائِهِ فَلَهُ الْفِطْرِ If a person is a resident, right, and he started the day out fasting, or he intended at least that he's going to fast that day, and then he travels during the day, not just any travel as we mentioned, it has to be a travel which is 80 kilometers or more, فَلَهُ الْفِطْرِ Then this person, it's permissible for him to break the fast on the journey. والدليل عند evidence in Sahih Muslim from Jabir أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خرج عام الفتح إلى مكة في رمضان that on the year of عام الفتح the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in Ramadan he went out to مكة فصام حتى بلغ فصام حتى بلغ قراء الغميم and he fasted until he reached a place outside of مدينة called قراء الغميم فصام الناس and the people also fasted with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم دع بقدح من ماء فرفعه the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم called for a pot of water and he raised it in front of the people حتى نظر الناس إليه so that the people could look at him ثم شرب and then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم went ahead and he drank from that water to show the people that in traveling you are allowed to break your fast if you wish to do so ولأنه الآن على سفر شيخ منصور says because now the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or the person is a traveler وسفر مبيح للفطر and traveling is permitting for a person to break his fast فأباحه في أثناء النهار كالمرض so it's permissible for the person during the day to break his 
fast if he is traveling like it's permissible for the one who is sick to break his fast. وَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ And again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the same verse in Surah Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفْرٍ فَإِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرْ So he who from amongst you is sick or on a journey, then they should make up their fast from other days. Point to mention here, as mentioned by the majority of the ulama, that the fit of the breaking of the fast, it's only allowed once the person has left the built up areas of their town or city, once they left the residential area of their town or city, then they are considered as being travelers. So the description of traveler is not given to them until that has taken place. In this situation, then they are allowed to break their fast. As mentioned by Sheikh Sami al suqair Again, in his explanation of Rawdul Murbi' and Rawdul Murbi', as you know, is the famous explanation of the text that we are taking of Imam al Bahuti. The author he says, If the one who is pregnant or the one who is breastfeeding breaks their fast, and they broke their fast because they were fearful upon themselves, they were fearful for their own health, then all they have to do is to make up the fast another day. However, if they yani if they um, were fearful for their children and not for their child that was being breastfed or the child which is in the womb, uh, if that was the situation then in this situation uh, they have to make up the fast and as well as making up the fast they have to feed for every day which was not fasted a sick person along with it so if they fear for themselves only then all they have to do is make up the fast however if they fear for uh, the child and not themselves then they have to make up the day and also they have to feed a sick person is there a third scenario we mentioned two scenarios here question to yourselves what's the third scenario so we have that they fear for themselves or they fear for their child. What's the third scenario? Tayyib, a third scenario is that they fear for themselves and they fear for their child. So in this situation, they would be given the first ruling, like they only feared for themselves, which is that they only have to make up the fast and that there's no feeding needs to take place. Sheikh Mansour, in his explanation, he says, Hafidahullah, the breaking of the fast for the pregnant woman and for the one who is nursing, breastfeeding, has situations. The first of them, that they fear for themselves only. Or for themselves and their child together. So in this situation, it's allowed for them to break the fast. And all that's upon them is that they make up the day. And there is no kafara, there is no feeding upon them. Rather what is upon them is only to make up the fast. And the reason is that they are given the ruling of being like the sick person. So in this situation, they only have to make up. Uh, in this situation, they are allowed to break the fast. And as for not, and as for it not being obligatory upon them to feed poor people as a kafara, because the breaking of the fast for a sick person it's not upon them that they have to feed anybody because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ فَإِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ وَأَمَّا الْقَضَىٰ As pertaining to making up the fast فَلِعْمُومِ قَوْلِ تَعَالَىٰ فَإِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Because due to the generality of the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal make up those days that you missed due, uh, at another time وَقِيَاسًا عَلَىٰ الْمَرَضِ and of course, the qiyas is made upon the sick person. A thaniya, a second point, and takhafa ala walidihima. If they fear upon their children, their child only, and not upon themselves. فَيَجُوزُ الْإِفْطَارِ وَيَجِبُ الْقَضَى So it's permitted for them to make the iftar, it's permitted for them to break the fast, or not to fast, either case. وَيَجِبُ الْقَضَى 
and it's obligatory upon them to make up the day that they missed. وَيَجِبُوا أَن تُطْعِمَا أَن كُلِّ يَوْمٍ مِسْكِينَ As well as doing that, they have to also feed a poor person as we mentioned. Why? What's the evidence? We have the evidence in the hadith of Bukhari Muslim due to the verse وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةُ تُطْعَمُ مِسْكِينَ In Surah Al-Baqarah, upon those who it's difficult to fast, then they should feed a poor person, right? In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma, he mentioned about this, uh, and this narration, this particular narration is in Abi Dawood. كَانَتْ رُخْصَ That this used to be a permission. أَيْ كَانَتْ حَدِ الْآيَا رُخْصَ لِشَيْكِ الْكَبِيرِ وَالْمَرْأَةُ الْكَبِيرَةِ وَهُمَّ يُطِيقَانِ الصِّيَامِ that it used to be a permission for the elderly man and the elderly woman who found difficulty in fasting that they were able to, they were allowed and permitted to break their fast and not fast and it was upon them that they would feed in place of the fasting every day a poor person and then he carries on and also for the pregnant woman and the breastfeeding woman if they fear for their children أَفْتَرَتَ وَأَطْعَمَتَ Then they have to, then they uh, don't fast or they break the fast, whatever the situation be. But then they have to أَطْعَمَتَ They have to feed poor people in place of the fasting. So this is the evidence. Question to yourselves. Who pays the kafara? Who is the one that pays the, the, the fidya? Who is the one that pays for the feeding of the poor? طيب the feeding is upon the one who is financially responsible for the care of the child, whoever that be. Whoever is financially responsible for the care of the child, it's upon that person that they make the payment to the poor people. So, the um, question I was going to ask, can the kafara for more than one day, so a person has, the woman, she has more than one day of kafara, she missed more than one day of fasting, can that kafara, can that feeding be given to one person? And the answer is yes. The next question is why? Why can it be given to one person only? Because each day is a separate act of worship. Because each day is a separate act of worship, so she can pay for one day that person, and then the next day that she misses, she can also pay uh, to that person. This is what the ulama, they mention. طيب, uh, the Imam Al-Hijawi, he says, If a person is in a situation where he had the intention to fast, or he was fasting, then Junna, then he lost his faculty, his mental faculties, or he became unconscious for the whole of the day, and he didn't regain his consciousness, consciousness any part of that day, then his fasting is not correct, it's not valid from him. لَا إِنَّمَا جَمِيعَ النَّهَارِ But not if the person slept the whole day. If a person sleeps the whole day, then his fasting is valid. Let's read what Sheikh Mansour, he says, النِّيَةُ وَالْإِمْسَاكُ عَلَى الْمُفَطَّرَاتُ هُمَا رُكْنَا الصِّيَامِ That intention and avoiding the things that break the fasting are the two pillars of fasting. فَإِذَا سَقَطَتْ النِّيَةُ So if the niyyah is removed because the person loses his faculty or the person is... Um, what was the other one? Mughma Ali. The person becomes unconscious. Lam yusih asam. Then the fasting is not going to be valid. Walau baqi al imsak. Even if the person didn't eat or drink anything for that day, because the niya, which is a shart, and we know from the definition of shart, the definition of conditions that we've taken many times before, is that it has to be continual through the act of worship. And the exception is. If the person was sleeping, and no, لو نام كل النهار فيصح صومه. If a person sleeps the whole day, then his fasting is going to be valid. Why? وذلك لأن النوم لا يزول به الإحساس بالكلية. And that is because when you are sleeping, a person is sleeping, his إحساس, his ability to feel or to be woken up and to pay attention to something is not removed completely. وَهُوَ فِي حُكْمٍ الْمُتَنَبِّعِ So he is in the ruling of the one who is able to pay attention. لِكَوْنِهِ يَنْتَبِهُ إِذَا نُبِّهَا Because if he is woken up or if he was called, he will be able to respond. وَيَجِدُ الْأَلَمْ فِي حَالِ نَوْمِهِ And also a person who is sleeping can find and feel pain in uh, when he is sleeping. 
And due to this, what I've just mentioned, Sheikh Mansour is saying, the difference is made clear between the sleeping person and the one who has either lost his mind or the one who is has become unconscious. لكن, لكنه ارتكب محذورا وهو ترك الصلوات في وقتها. However, the person who sleeps the whole day of Ramadan, he has committed that which is haram. That which is haram means that he has missed out in praying the salawat on the times when he should have prayed them. طيب. The author he says, وَلْيَلْزَمُوا الْمُغْمَ عَلَيْهِ الْقَضَاءُ فَقَطْ And it's also upon, it's upon the one who was مُغْمَ عَلَيْهِ Unconscious that he only has to make up the fast. Nothing else is upon him. بالنسبة للقضاء يلزم المغمى عليه أثناء النهار القضاء والعلة So the illa, the reason why this one who was unconscious has to make up the fast أن مدة الإغماء غالبا لا تتطاول Because the duration of unconsciousness in normal circumstances is not very long That's why the ruling is given that the person who is unconscious for a day or two days has to make up the fast that he missed ولم يزل التكليف عنه بالإغماء and the obligation of fasting remains upon the person who is unconscious. فهو بالمريد أشبه من المجنون. So he is given the ruling of being closer to the marid, to the sick person, more so than the uh, majnoon person, more so than the person who lost his faculty of mental state. أما المجنون, as for the mental person, فإنه ليس عليه القضاء. In this person, there is no قضاء upon him. لأنه ليس بمكلف ذلك اليوم. Because for that day, when he lost his mental state, he was not a person upon whom there is تكليف. Meaning that the sharia, the obligations were not upon him on that day due to him losing his mind. فقد رفع, رفع القلم. As verily the pen was lifted for him, from him, as we mentioned in the hadith previously of Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه. Uh, قوله ويجب تعيين نية. The author he says ويجب is oblig is obligatory to make تعيين النية to specify the intention for the fast من الليل from the night لصوم كل يوم واجب. So it's obligatory that the person makes the intention from the previous night for the next day's fasting and each day of fasting. النية العزم. Sheikh Mansour says that niya is azm, is determination to do something. والمراد بها هنا العزيمة على صوم. And the intent here of this statement that Sheikh Mansour just mentioned is that you have azima, you have determination to fast. وفي نية الصيام مسائل. And pertaining to the intention of fasting, there are some مسائل, there are some issues. الأولى حكم النية في الصوم. The Hukum of the niya in the psalm. What is the ruling of niya in psalm? A niya to fi psalm shartun li qubulihi. The niya, the fasting, uh, sorry, the intention in fasting is a condition for it to be accepted. And it has to be there. Wa dhalika li annahu ibadah. And that's obviously because it's an act of worship. Wal ibadat la bud laha min niya. And as we know, that acts of worship, it's imperative that they have intentions. Wa qad qala Allah ta'ala fi hadith al qudsi. And in the hadith in Qudsi, in Bukhari, in Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the fasting person, يَتْرُكُ طَعَامُهُ That he leaves off his food for me, وَشَرَابُهُ And his drinking, وَشَهْوَتُهُ مِنْ أَجْلِي He leaves off his food, his drinking, and his desires for my sake. So this, of course, is alluding to, to the fact that there has to be intention in the fast. ثُمَّ إِذَا كَانَ صَوْمْ فَرْضًا فَالنِّيَةُ وَاجِبَ فِيهِ بِاتِفَاقُ الْأُلَمَاءُ and likewise, if the fasting is of an obligatory nature, then all of the ulama, they agree that the intention is wajib. The intention is obligatory. فَلَا يَجُوزُ صَوْمُ رَمَضَانِ إِلَّا بِنِيَةٍ Therefore, a fasting day of Ramadan is not allowed unless there is an intention there. وَإِنْ كَانَ صَوْمُ نَفْلًا فَيَأْتِي بِيَانُهُ However, if the, song, if the fasting is a nafl or supererogatory, we will discuss this later. Second matter, الثانية, وقت نية للصيام الفرد. What is the time wherein the intention has to be made for the obligatory fast? وقت نية من الليل. The time for the نية is from the night. It has to be from the night before. فلا بد أن يبي أن يبيت النية من الليل. أن يبيت النية من الليل. So it's imperative that the intention for the fasting has to be there from the night. ولا تجوز قبله. And it's not permitted before that. In the hadith of Abu Dawood and Ahmed, 
and others, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the hadith of Hafsa radiyallahu anha, who said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, man lam yujmi' man lam yujmi' al-siyam qabla al-fajr fala siyam lahu. That whoever doesn't bring the intention for fasting that day, the next day before fajr, then they have no uh, fasting. Wa fi lafzin, and in one narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, min al-layl, that the person has to bring the intention from the night. So the niyyah is for each day because it's a separate act of worship. The niyyah is for each day because it's a separate act of worship. Um, another riwayah in the madhab held by Ibn Taymiyyah ta is that one niyyah at the beginning of Ramadan, before Ramadan starts, the night before Ramadan suffices for the whole month unless there's an interruption due to sickness or due to a ha'id or due to a person traveling etc then the niyyah would have to be renewed otherwise if that's not the situation then according to Ibn Taymiyyah ta then one niyyah at the beginning of Ramadan suffices the author may Allah have mercy upon him he said لا نية الفرضية that you don't have to make the niyyah of fardiyya. If you've made the niyyah that I'm fasting for Ramadan, you don't then have to make the niyyah that I'm doing a fard fasting. لا يجب أن ينوي أنه يصوم فرضا وذلك لأنه إذا نوى صوم رمضان فالمعلوم أنه فرض And it's obvious that if a person is fasting Ramadan, then it's well known that it's a fard fast, it's an obligatory fast. والواجب لا يكون إلا فرض So the person doesn't have to make the niyyah that he's fasting fard. If he's fast, if he's made the niyyah for Ramadan, that suffices. The author, he says, وَيُسِحْهُ أَنَّفْلُوا بِنِيَّةٍ مِنَ النَّهَارِ قَبْلَ زَوَالِ وَبَعْدَهُ With regards to the supererogatory niyyah, you can make it at any time, whether you did it uh, the night before, whether you did it during the day before the zawal or after the zawal. So at any time. And from the evidences of this is the hadith in Sahih Muslim of Aisha radiyallahu anha which she said دَخَلَ عَلَيْنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَمْ ذَاتَ يَوْمٍ That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم entered upon his family one day فَقَالْ هَلْ عِنْدَكُمْ شَيْءٍ Do you have anything meaning from food or drink? فَقُلْنَا لَا So we, the wives of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, we said no. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said فَإِنِّي إِذَنْ صَائِمٌ In that case then I'm going to fast. So this hadith clearly shows that a person can make his intention during the day for a non-obligatory fast, for a fast which is a nafal fast. Um, also a point to mention here, in this situation that the person should be from Ahlul Suyam. It should be, the person should be in this situation from a person who fasting was originally obligatory upon them. Thus, a ha'id for example, the one who is menstruating, uh, if she becomes pure during the day, she didn't have the niyyah before Fajr, of course, because she was menstruating. And she becomes pure during the day, let's say around 12 o'clock midday, and she hasn't eaten or drunk. Therefore, her fast is not going to be valid, even though she didn't do anything to break her fast. Why? Because she wasn't from Ahl al Wujub. She wasn't from those who fasting was obligatory upon because she had the mania. She had the excuse not to fast. Okay, so even if she didn't eat or drink, uh, then her fast wouldn't be valid. The author, he says, وَلَوْ نَوَى إِنْ كَانَ غَدًا مِنْ رَمَضَانٍ فَهُوَ فَرْضِي لَمْ يُجْزِئْهُ If a person with regards to intention says to himself as in his intention that if tomorrow is Ramadan, then that is going to be my obligatory fast. So he says, if tomorrow is Ramadan, then that's going to be my obligatory fast. Uh, then in this situation, his intention and his fast is not valid. Sheikh Mansur, he says, Surat al-Mas'ala, the conceptualization or the picturing of this issue is as follows. A person on the 30th night of Sha'ban, he sleeps, and it didn't become clear to him, is Ramadan tomorrow or not? So he made an intention. In kana ghadan min Ramadan, fa'ana sa'imul fard. If tomorrow is going to be Ramadan, then I am going to be fasting the obligatory fast of Ramadan. Wa illa fahuwa samul nadar aw nafal. And if it's not the obligatory day of Ramadan tomorrow, then my fasting is going to be a fasting of a vow or a supererogatory nafal fast, for example. Fahada ta'aliq la yasih. So this conditioning here that the person is making for himself is not permitted. 
and it won't suffice him as a day of fasting for Ramadan if the day did end up being a day of Ramadan. Well, and the reasoning for this, that his niya waqa'at ala wajhi taraddud lal jazm, that his niya came about with taraddud, going back and forth, or we can say not conviction. The niya wasn't made based upon conviction. ولا بد في النية من الجزم and it's imperative that when you make the niya there has to be jazm there has to be conviction when you make the niya and also the ulama they say as a, in the rule of fiqh التردد في النية كمن لا نية له تردد not being uh, convinced in your intention going back and forth uh, is as though one doesn't have an intention so in this situation we're saying that the person his fast is not valid because he didn't make a, convin a, a sure intention that he's going to fast tomorrow as the day of Ramadan. Another riwayah from Imam Ahmed as held by Ibn Taymiyyah and others is that the, the person's fasting will be okay in this situation. طيب. Question to yourselves. If the person says, if tomorrow is the 30th day of Ramadan, yani he's fasted 29 days. So on the 30th uh, night, he's saying to himself, is tomorrow turns out to be the 30th day of Ramadan, then I'm going to fast. And if it's not the 30th day of Ramadan, then I'm muftir. So here he has again a taraddud in his niyyah. His niyyah is not upon conviction, right? So is his fast, his fast is valid. And the question to yourselves is why? Why is the fast valid here but it wasn't valid in the previous situation where he was making the intention on the 30th night of Ramadan, on 30th night of Sha'ban, that if tomorrow is Ramadan, then my fasting is for Ramadan. But if it's not Ramadan, then I will be a Nafal fast. So in this situation, on the 30th uh, of Ramadan, Okay, tomorrow is going to be the 30th of Ramadan. So in the night he makes the intention that if tomorrow is going to be the last day of Ramadan, then I will be fasting. And if it's not the last day of Ramadan, then I will not be fasting. So here he didn't have uh, a, a conviction in his intention, but I'm saying to you that his fast is valid. Why? Ahsan Allah ilayk. Jazakallah khair. Perfect. Barakallah fiq. Exactly. So Sheikh Sami al-Suqair, Sheikh Sami al-Suqair, Hafidullah, he says it like... Brother um, Hassan just mentioned, for whom you farikuna bayna and yakula dalika laith thalathin min al-Sha'ban. So they make a difference between the one who has this issue on the 30th night of Sha'ban, wa bayna and yakula dalika laith thalathin min Ramadan, and between the one who says it on the 30th night of Ramadan. For fi mas'alit al ula, for fil mas'alit al ula yakulun. So in the first situation, which is the Sha'ban one, they say la yasih. It's not permitted. Why? Because the asl is that Ramadan hasn't entered. So he, the person in this situation will be mutaraddid. And in the second situation, which is the 30th of Ramadan, they say that his niya would be okay. Why? Because the asl, the foundation, is that the Ramadan is remaining, still remains. فَهَذَا تَرَدُّدْ لَا يَضُرْ So this taraddud doesn't harm his intention. The author he says, وَمَنْ نَوَ الْإِفْطَارْ أَفْطَرَ And whoever intends that he's going to break his fast, then his fast is broken. SubhanAllah, very dangerous. Whoever intends that he's going to break his fast, then his fast is broken. Sheikh Mansour says, إِذَا كَانَ الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا كَانَ الْإِنسَانُ صَائِمًا If a person is fasting. ثُمَّ نَوَ قَتَ الْصِيَامُ وَالْإِفْطَارْ Then he decides to break the fast. And he wants to have iftar, meaning that he wants to uh, eat and drink something or have sexual intercourse. So in this situation, the niya of the fasting is broken. And in this situation, he's like one who didn't have an intention. This is whether it's fard or nafad. And the reason for this is because siyam has two realities. The first of them, an niya, and the second of them, tarku jamil al mufattarat, to leave off all the things which break the fasting. Wa ida nawa al iftar ikhtalat al haqiqat al ula. And if he intends that he's going to break the fast, then the first 
reality of the first pillar of fasting has gone which is the intention and uh, an act of worship cannot stand cannot be valid except with the intention and also because the intention is a condition throughout the whole day so if he breaks it during the day breaks the intention during the day then it means that the fast is not valid because the niyyah didn't continue throughout the whole day therefore the whole of the fast of that day is become spoilt and invalid because it missed out on the condition which was the intention lacking however he mentions an important point Sheikh Masur he says المراد, المراد the intent of their statement افطر, that whoever intends iftar whoever intends to break the fast has broken the fast أي, that this means that he is given the ruling as that he didn't have the niyyah for fasting not that he is given the ruling of being a person who ate or drank so how does this benefit us what Sheikh Masood just mentioned to us how does it benefit us to know that the person who decided to break his fast he's given the ruling of the one that didn't have the intention in the first place not given the ruling as the one who broke his fast by eating or drinking how does this benefit us knowing this point Taib Sheikh Mansour he says if a person decided to intend to break his fast in a nafal fast but then later on in the same day he wanted to renew his intention to fast that nafal fast and he didn't fall into anything which broke the fast like eating drinking or sexual intercourse then his fasting is going to be valid because remember in the nafal you can make the niya at any time as long as you haven't eaten or drunk or had sexual intercourse etc as with regards to the fard, this wouldn't work. And the reason for that is because as we've mentioned, that the niyyah has to be there from the previous night and it has to remain for the whole of the day. Um, but with regards to somebody just having thoughts in his mind, I, I wouldn't mind breaking today's fast. This, this doesn't break the fast. What it's referring to is that the person has some type of surety in his heart that he wants to break the fast. This is the niyyah that would break the fast. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mistakes and shortcomings from myself and shaitan. If you have any questions on what we took, then feel free. Uh, may Allah bless us all for this. Ameen.